In this video, we're going to program intro four. It's a pro, uh, out of the package that you were able to download. And we're going to add a grooving cycle and a threading cycle to this part. So I've already gone in and programmed the basic sh shape. I faced the part and I turned the OD roughed and finished. We've already done that several times. So I went ahead and did that ahead of time here. And I've also gone in and set up tool three and four, my grooving tool and my threading tool. Pretty simple information to look through here. So I'm going to call it a grooving tool. It's going to ask for the maximum step over, which is a percentage of the thickness of the tool. I'm sorry, of the width of the tool. The geometry offset or the orientation is going to be very similar to a turning tool. It's going to be that front left corner that we're going to touch off to. So the orientation is going to be just like the turning tool because we're going to be programming to that front edge of the insert. The corner radius in this particular case, they were 8 thousandths per corner. So that information is all set on the geometry offsets page. Put some feeds and speeds in here. Based on which corner your orientation is referencing, in this case, corner number one here, or the bottom left, if I were to select that to make the bottom left corner two, this becomes a face grooving tool. So that's how I'm going to control whether I'm doing a face groove or an OD groove. In this case, we're doing an OD groove, so I'm going to leave it at corner one. It asks for what is the maximum depth that you'll be able to go with that tool and what is the width, and I called it an eighth of an inch. The next tool I did is the threading tool. It's going to be tool number four. I selected threading, maximum depth of cut, and you'll see here because the very center of that insert is what we're programming to, we use this orientation where we're just pointing straight down. If this was an ID, we'd be pointing straight up. Just like on the groove, if it was an ID groove, we would be pointing up and to the left. Some speeds and feeds, coolant condition was our max depth or the max height of the insert, and what is our included angle on that. Now, especially on the threading tool, this information here for the size is going to determine what your graphics look like. If I were to just arbitrarily put it one inch in here, well, one inch tall at 60 degrees is going to be a very large insert that's going to show it violating parts of the finished workpiece that really aren't going to get violated when I use the actual size of tool. So for graphics purposes, we want to definitely make sure that we accurately describe what this tool is going to look like. All right, so there's my tool three and tool four for grooving and threading. So now we're going to go to our program. I'm going to go ahead and insert a block at the end of the program here. It's going to be turning and we're going to call it groove. Go ahead and open that block and we have our normal process, geometry, tabs, and we also have a pattern tab this time, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So under the process, we're going to use tool three. That's the tool we're going to be using. Do we want to use the max step over and feeds and speeds that came in with the tool? Yes, I do. You can see that all that information has been uh, filled in for us. We have a couple of selections here for strategy. We're going to rough this out and then immediately finish it. We could also just rough or just finish, depending on whether this, where this was in the program, if we'd already roughed this out previously or for whatever reason. And we will do the whole thing in one finish pass as well, where rather than starting in the middle and moving out or from the outside moving in, it would just basically contour this groove. We're going to select rough and finish. And I want to talk about, I'm going to skip to this part here, the sequence. So the way this is going to get rough and finished is going to be determined by what we select here under our sequence. So the one I'm selecting is going to be 2, 1 and 2, 4. That means we're going to start in the middle and it's going to step over whatever the percentage of our tool is each time until it gets to one. Then it's going to go back to the middle and step over going the other direction until it gets to four. So that's the two one and two four. 
The other options would be going to 2, 4 first and then to 1, from 1 to 4, or from 4 to 1. So that's the um, progression or how we set this particular sequence. We have our retract clearance, which is how far off of the part it's going to pull. I'm going to put 20 thousandths in there. Our retract angle, our cut clearance is going to be 50. That is, those are how far it pulls away and how far apart away from the part it is when it comes in and begins to cut. Our step over, we said it was going to be 50% of the width of the tool. It's an eighth inch tool. We're going to step over a sixteenth of an inch until we get whatever width of this groove needs to be done. If we wanted to peck this down in X and, um, as we go, we could put a peck depth in here. Typically, we'll just go to the bottom of the groove. And we get to select whether or not we want to use a rapid position. I typically don't unless I'm trying to clear something coming around the tailstock or something like that. I would then want to give it a rapid to position in X and Z where it would position to before it came into the part. I'm not worried about it in this case, so I'm just going to leave that at no. And if I wanted any stock allowance here, I'm going to put some information. Let's put 10 thousandths on everything for the finished pass to come in and remove. Geometry. This is an outside groove. We could also select inside or face. And of course, if we selected face, we would have had to change the information on our tool setup page. So that was a face groove, not an OD groove. And we're going to program our starting diameter and our ending diameter. And we're just going to talk about the groove, the feature that the groove is on. In this case, it's a three inch diameter boss or a shoulder. And then what's the final depth? Those retract clearance, approach clearances, those are going to can determine how far away from the part we begin when we're traveling along the part or when we're coming in to do the cutting. So here, we're going to do an outside groove. We're going to put that right at three inches for our max diameter. Our Z start. Notice this little green plus here on the uh, image that shows the groove. That means we're programming to the back side of the insert. So we've touched off to the front, but we're actually programming the feature wherever that little plus sign is. So we're going to program to the back side. So if we look at our print, we have a quarter inch wide groove, full width at the top, and that back side of that particular groove, we don't have to do any math, the right side of that groove is negative four inches into the part. So our Z start can be minus four inches. From there, it wants to know what's the groove width. Well, it's a quarter inch. So we want to make sure whatever tool we're using is smaller than that. And what is the, the X bottom or the diameter at the bottom of the groove? And we see that is 2.8. Now, we have some, a lot of selections here for corners, wa tapered walls, and things like that. If we look at this particular print, this feature, the right side of that groove is tapered 45 degrees. And if we look at our image, that is from corner one to corner two, we have a 45 degree angle. So here, where it says tapering one to two or four to three, we're going to put 45 degrees in there. So it is going to taper that entire wall by 45 degrees. That leaves a corner at 1 and 4 that we probably want to break. And we have some little internal radiuses at 2 and 3 that if whatever radius on our insert was not enough or sufficient, then we could form those as well. And we do that by selecting the corner here and what is it we want on that corner. So I'm going to break 1 and 4 with a radius of 20 thousandths. But I could also select it to be squared off, a chamfer with a specific angle and size, or and I said I'm going to do a radius, and I'm going to put 0 0.02. And I'm also going to do that on corner 4. I'm going to put 
0.02. Now I'm leaving 2 and 3 left to radius because I'm not trying to swing anything. Whatever that tool comes down and does, that's going to create the uh, radius that we want down there. So I'm going to leave those at radius even though really I'm not forming a radius there. I'm leaving it in the 0. And the last tab here would be pattern. So if this groove repeated down the shaft here for you know every inch or something like that, I would be able to put the number of repeats and what's the distance between them. In this case, we don't have a repeat, so we're done. If I go ahead and I draw this, we'll see that groove come in in the position where it should be. So we have our quarter inch wide at the top here, our 45 degree angle coming down this tapered wall and we have it to our bottom um, bottom diameter. If I hit the high res and then zoom in, we'll be able to see that it did break these corners here and here. It gave us the 20 thousandths radiuses that we were looking for. So once again, we'll slow that down a little bit, we'll watch this face and turn, and then we'll watch that grooving tool come in. There we go. So that's the groove. Now we'll go in and we'll do the thread that's on the end of the part. So we're going to go to our program. We'll just open up this grooving block and do a next block. So we'll add a block 6. It's also under turning because it's a 2D thread and we select thread. Here we're going to use tool 4. It brought in all the information that we had programmed in the tool. Do we want to use a safe rapid point? Yes or no? Again, there's no reason. In this particular case, we don't have anything that we're trying to get up and around, so we're going to start at the end of the part or off the end of the part, so there's really no reason to worry about that. And now we have some other things we need to decide. We have a decreasing depth of cut and a consistent volume removal or constant depth of cut. The difference between the two is if I do a de decreasing depth, which is what I'm going to use, I'm going to have a rough start depth, which is the maximum or the most that tool will ever engage, and I'm going to have a final depth. How much is the last pass? And it's going to break it up between those two. So as I get further out on that angle where I'm going to get more pressure on the tool, we're going to reduce the depth of cut each time so we don't snap the end of that off. There are some inserts that will take that so you can use the constant depth so every pass would be exactly the same, but here we're going to be doing decreasing depths. If I were to put, let's say put five thousandths for my rough start depth, two thousandths for my rough final depth, I then have to tell it how many finish passes and at what depth am I going to take those. Let's do one thou for each one of the um, final passes. So we're going to do one pass at one thousandths. Go to the geometry page. We're going to select, well, what kind of thread is this? It's an OD straight in our case. We can do an OD or ID straight or taper. Face thread. We're going to do an OD straight. Our Z start. I'm going to start about a quarter inch in front of the part. The Z end. Uh, that shoulder is an inch and a half. I don't really want to run into that other shoulder there. It doesn't give me a max depth, but I'm going to go an inch and a quarter. So minus 1.25. The Z clearance. Not a huge deal here because we're not doing a face groove, but I am going to put something in there. And I'm going to put 20 thou in my X groove, or X clearance. Again, that's how far off the major diameter we're going to lift as we go back for our next pass. The major diameter, in this case, is going to be inch 1.5. And our minor diameter on this print says it is a 1.301. The pitch or the inch, uh, threads per inch, either one that I know. In this case, it's telling me it's eight threads per inch. I could put that in, or I know that that to be an eighth of an inch pitch. And it calculated 
the threads per inch. If I had to put threads per inch, it would have calculated what the pitch is. Vertical lead in, yes or no? I'm going to say no. I want to come in on that in feed angle. I want that tool to be increasing or increasing its depth along an in feed angle of 29 and a half degrees. I don't really want to come straight down each time. However, I do want to do a vertical lead out. I want to get up close to that shoulder and pull straight up. I want to vertically exit the part rather than come out on that 29 and a half degree angle. I don't want to hit that shoulder. Do I want a safety start angle? That would be a round the part. I don't need to do that and it's only a single start thread. So I'll leave that at one. Now I will show this. If I go back to my process tab, Based on the information that I have here, it's a decreasing depth. My first roughing depth will be a 5 thou. My final roughing depth will be 2 thou. And I want to leave 1 thou for my final finish pass. That is going to tell me the number of passes right here. So in this particular case, with these parameters, this would take 27 passes to create that thread. So I'm going to increase this speed up a little bit here, and we'll watch it run. Now, while this is running, I want to talk about the fact that it looks like it turned this shoulder. Let's look at that in opaque a little bit. So, watch that run again. It looks as if it turned that. That's just a graphics thing. So we went from inch and a half diameter down to a 1.301, but our graphics just doesn't show those threads that are being created. It just kind of represents it as if we'd turn this diameter. If I look at it in wireframe or toolpath, I'm going to see pretty much the same thing. So this blue line here represents our major diameter of inch and a half. This smaller one down here represents our one point. Uh, 301 that we told it, and it just so happens to be very much the same as the chamfer that we let on the front of the part. So when we actually cut this, we would see, um, we would still see that, that uh, chamfer on the front of the part. You see here we have our 20 thou pull off. That's what this little yellow line here it represents. We have our end feed angle of 29 and a half degrees. We've started a quarter inch in front of the part, and we've gone all the way back to our pull-off, which was a vertical pull-off. Again, 20 thousandths off the part before it went back for each of the passes. So 27 passes in total, and we have the threads that we need on the front of the part now. I'll run this one more time. So we have a completed part.